Good Hello. evening. Oh, Mr. Chairman. Hello. Hi. We got all seven. Uh, Mr. Riom is. See if he's eating. Well, he doesn't want to be too early. <laughs> no. I see four of us. I that's a quorum. One. That, that's one, two, three. Oh, yeah, four. So who are we missing? Oh, Carol. Oh, Carol won't be here, right? Isn't that right, Gia? That's right. Yes. So, and everybody, we're now live on YouTube. <clears throat> so we do have a quorum. And if when, when Ken hits us, then we'll have, we will have five. A super quorum. Super quorum. I'll start the webinar then, Andy. There he is. All right. We're good to go. I can. Should we start early? Hey, everybody. No, we can't start early. I mean, should we start the webinar early or oh, should we sure. wait until? Okay. No, you can start early. I'll go ahead and start it now. Here we, we don't go. want the public to miss anything. <laughs> Hello, everybody on YouTube. We're about two minutes off from the Sunnyvale Planning Commission meeting for. Hello again, everybody on YouTube. We're about one, two minutes out from the Planning Commission meeting for Sunnyvale, California for uh, October 11th, 2021. But you knew that because you tuned in on purpose, I'm sure. I actually get recommended, Roku recommends me city meetings now when I'm clicking around on YouTube. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's must-see TV, isn't it? I've seen one or two is like, there's been one views of this video. I'm like, <laughs> I think we'll leave it at one for now. <laughs> All right, one more minute to go. About a half a minute. <clears throat> And it's seven o'clock. Uh, welcome to the Sunnyvale, City of Sunnyvale Planning Commission meeting for October 11th, 2021. The meeting is called to order. Before we get started, I'd like to remind the planning commissioners of some procedural items for the meeting. During the meeting, commissioners and participants should remain muted when not speaking. If commissioners or participants have a question or comment, please use the raise your hand feature in the Zoom. Speakers will be called upon to speak one at a time. A random order voice vote will be administered by city staff for each vote. The planning commission meeting is being conducted utilizing teleconferencing and electronic means consistent with the state of California executive orders N-29-20, N-08-21, and N-15-21 regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. Members of the public may provide audio public comment by connecting to the teleconference meeting online or by the telephone. Use the raise hand feature to request to speak star nine on a telephone. The Zoom link is published on the city's website. Automatically generated captions are available to viewers accessing this meeting via Zoom. Captions can be displayed or hidden using the live transcript button, which is down on the bottom right of your um, Zoom application. Tele uh, teleconference meeting details are available on the planning commission meeting agenda. Comments on oral item matters not on the agenda must be submitted prior to the time the chair calls the item for oral communications. Comments on agenda items must be submitted prior to the time the chair closes the public hearing on the agenda item. Speakers are requested to keep their comments to no more than three minutes and time limits will be enforced to be fair to everybody. Guidelines are posted on the planning commission meeting agenda. Roll call. City staff, may we please have the roll call. Yes, Commissioner Harrison. Present. Commissioner Howe. Present. Commissioner Rio. Present. 
Chair Howard. Present. Vice Chair Pine. Present. We have five commissioners present and Commissioner Wise absent. All right. Uh, oh, and we have a vacancy. That's why it's seven didn't add up in my head. Sorry. Thank you, uh, staff. Oral communications, a reminder to the public, please raise your digital hand or dial star nine on a telephone if you wish to address the Planning Commission on a topic that is not on tonight's agenda. City staff will ask you to unmute the microphone when it's your turn to address the Planning Commission. City staff, do we have any members of the public wishing to make oral communications? Not at this time, Chair Howard. All righty. I'm just pulling up the attendee list so I can see it too. Thank you for that. Uh, we can move along to the consent calendar. The consent calendar has two items today uh, for this meeting. One is to approve the Planning Commission meetings minutes of September 27th, 2021. And the second is regarding the design review for the house at 1258 Cranberry Avenue. Um, I bet we have a motion from Commissioner Howe. Certainly. Um, are you sure that there isn't just one item on the... Um consent calendar and the second is a, the second item on the agenda my understanding is it says consent calendar item one item two and then there's a section called public hearings journal business item number three enough i move the consent calendar all right thank you commissioner Howe. commissioner uh vice chair pine second thank you vice chair could we please call the vote on the consent calendar commissioner Bill. Yes. Commissioner Howe? Yes. Chair Howard? Yes. Vice Chair Pine? Yes. Commissioner Harrison? Yes. The motion passes with five yeses and Commissioner Wise absent. Excellent. Thank you for that. We can now move to the public. Sorry, sorry please. <laughs> the fate of the motion. Oh, the fate of the motion of the consent yeah. count? Yeah, just so they know, uh, the, the decision is final unless it's appealed or called up by the city council within 15 days. Specifically item number two for Cranberry Avenue? That's right, thank you. All right, all right. Consent calendar out of the way for sure. We move on to public hearing general business. Item number three, design review to construct a 471 square foot first floor addition to an existing one story single family home resulting in 1,946 square feet. Uh, and a variance to allow a four foot second floor setback where a minimum of seven feet is required to accommodate an exterior stair and landing on the proposed ADU at 1279 Palamos Avenue. The file number is 21-0957 and Cindy Holm or other competent staff who has a staff report. Hi, good evening, Chair, Vice Chair and honorable members of the Planning Commission. Again, my name is Cindy Hom, Associate Planner, presenting this item, which is a design review permit for 1279 Palamos Avenue. We can advance to the next slide. The application is for a 471 square foot, one story addition to the main dwelling and an 845 square foot new second story ADU resulting in a 47% ADU. And this um, includes the ADU in that calculation. The project also includes a variance to allow for a four foot second floor set back to accommodate the exterior staircase and landing for the proposed ADU. We can advance to the next slide. In this exhibit, it illustrates the site plan. The subject site is zoned R0 and is approximately 6,000 square feet in size. The existing home is shown in orange. The first floor additions is shown in um, the yellow shading and the proposed ADU is outlined in purple. Um, I also just wanted to, uh, again, mention the variance for the reduced second floor setback, and that's, again, to accommodate the staircase that's located on the left edge. We can advance to the next slide. So here is the proposed first floor plan. The addition to the first floor is shown in yellow. This is the uh, main dwelling um, and so these um, 
addition is to allow for um, expanded living areas that is connected to the kitchen and dining room, as well as enlargement of the garage. Advance to the next slide. Proposed is the second floor ADU. Um, the proposal includes two bedrooms, a kitchen and great room. The great room is connected to an exterior balcony along the front facade of the home. For this particular ADU, it is considered non-streamlined and subject to the underlining zoning development standards, including lot coverage, FAR, yard coverage, as well as design review. We can advance to the next slide. So this application originally came in back last year in May. Um, the original concept included um, a covered stairway with a uh, wrapped porch and balcony element. Um, for that particular concept, it would have required additional uh, variants um, for reduced front um, and side yard second uh, setback for the second floor. Um, at any rate, staff had worked with the applicant to um, minimize the balcony and considering that it's not a prevailing characteristic in the um, in the neighborhood. Uh, we worked with the applicant to reduce the size of the balcony and for it to be incorporated into the roof element over the garage, uh, thereby reducing some of the massing to that second floor. Um, staff is also recommending uh, the following conditions to further reduce the second story massing, which includes, um, if we can click, adding some um, horizontal siding treatment to the second floor uh, window to help um, create a visual break and further reduce the, the massing of the second floor. We can also click again. To revise this roof slope to match to 212 that's on the main roof and to reduce this forehead over the uh, front living room. We can click again to add some siding to the porch columns to uh, provide more definition to the front entry, as well as to um, incorporate some design elements uh, that tie in with the garage. And then also lastly, if we can click to reduce the wall plate height to no more than eight feet. Advance to the next slide. This is the rear elevation, again, showing a 212 pitch roof, or sorry, two and a half 12 pitch roof. Um, as designed, the second floor would maintain uh, the roof form of the original home, as well as the architectural character. We can advance to the next slide. The proposed addition does maintain sensitivity and privacy by utilizing um, high sill windows. They've also um, concealed the stairway to provide some additional privacy. This stairway um, consists of a solid wall that is cladded with the horizontal siding. Staff is supportive of the design due to its location. This um, stairway would overlook a garage and not into any active area or yard or window. Additionally, it's treated with um, horizontal siding, which ties in to the front facade for design continuity. This is also consistent with uh, single family design technique uh, number PV-4, which encourages the design of railings to be tailored to privacy concerns of the neighbor. Um, for example, if the balcony or deck overlooks an adjacent window or actively used yard, that it should be solid in form. Lastly, the variance findings could be um, met um, and would not constitute a special privilege considering there is um, 
a municipal code provision that allows for uncovered stairs and porches and landings um, to encroach into a, a setback by three feet. If we can advance to the next slide. Uh, if you can go back one and advance to the next slide. Thank you. Um, so this is the colors and material palette. Um, here they are showing um, the eave will be an enclosed eave. They are planning to utilize um, horizontal siding, which is the ferment, or sorry, fiber cement uh, horizontal siding, um, standing seam roof on the porch element and also on the roof, shed roofs over the garage. Um, they're using uh, more of a contemporary style of garage door, as well as windows, which um, are, uh, consist of casement windows with uh, an ebony uh, frame and mullion. They're also using decorative pavers for the garage driveway, and then also iron railings for the balcony. This, all these elements are consistent with the mid-century architectural style. We can advance to the next slide, which is depicting the streetscape. Um, the adjacent homes are single story and roughly around 17 feet and eight inches. The proposed uh, home would uh, stand at 23 feet, 10 inches, which is um, consistent with the height limit that is allowed that's the next slide. And the next few slides are, are architectural renderings of the proposed home. This is showing the site context with the neighboring homes. Can advance to the next slide. Here is a Northwest perspective, again, showing the entry element and then as well as the balcony over the garage. Advance to the next slide. This is just the opposite perspective showing a, a northeast uh, perspective, which again showing the um, stairway to the landing to the ADU entry. Uh, next slide. So the applicant is uh, requesting for planning commission consideration for an alternative design. They would like to see a planning commission uh, would entertain the original concept, which included a, a covered exterior uh, stairway por wrap porch and balcony element. Um, as mentioned earlier, um, these elements would require a variance for reduced second floor setbacks. Um, additionally, in the original concept, it had a roof cover over the stairs landing and the balcony. And the way that our, our definition is written for floor area, those areas would uh, count as floor area towards the ADU. And in our ADU provisions, we do have a maximum size for attached ADUs. It can't be more than 50% of the um, existing single family dwelling. Um, lastly, they want consideration for a 412 pitch roof, which is uh, not a common neighborhood pattern. For this particular neighborhood, um, the roofs are uh, shallow pitched. Um, additionally, it would not be consistent with their design techniques, uh, which encourage roofs to relate to those by uh, nearby homes um, and for the utilization of roof forms, orientations, and ridge heights that are similar to the neighborhood. Advance to the next slide. So um, for our design guidelines, it does have a definition for neighborhood block for the purposes of assessing neighborhood character and scale. Um, the neighborhood is, is defined as both uh, as both the block face within the same and immediately adjacent block. And so below is, um, is an example of, of how we would um, 
Demon neighborhood when we're assessing compatibility. Advance to the next slide. So there are two alternative concepts um, for this expanded balcony. Uh, the first concept is utilizing an open railing. And if we can advance to the next slide. It's a combination of a solid and uh, open railing for the balcony. Um, both of these um, concepts result in a larger balcony and steeper roof. Uh, this proposal would not be supported by staff. Um, again, uh, for the reasons outlined earlier, that it would require uh, setback deviations um, as well as the size to the ADU and also just um, inconsistency with their design guidelines. We can advance to the next slide. So there are three alternatives for Pine Commission's consideration. One is to approve the design review and variance subject to the findings in attachment three and conditions of approval in attachment four. Second alternative is to approve the design review and variance with modified conditions. And the last option is to deny the design review and provide direction to staff and the applicant where changes should be made. Staff is recommending uh, to approve the design review, review subject to the conditions of approval and findings. And that concludes staff's presentation. Thank you very much, Ms. Hahn. We've got some questions from planning commissioners, starting with uh, Vice Chair. Thank you. Uh, so my first question was, uh, when you were going through the added conditions of approval, you mentioned plate, you mentioned the eight and a half foot plate height. My understanding was that was discussed with applicant, but that wasn't an explicit condition of approval in PS2. Should, should we be looking at adding it in PS2? So staff is actually recommending that the wall plate height on the second floor be reduced to eight feet. So that that should have been captured in PS2. Okay, because the PS2 that is in the packet just lists. Just lists, and I have just have an A, B, and C for the horizontals, for the horizontal siding, the porch column yeah, on the second floor elevation, the porch column cladding, and the two and a half to 12 uh, pitch roof ratio. The vice chair, I do see that. And, and so that would be a correction to the, to the conditions of approval that that would be added as item D to reduce the wall plate height to eight feet. Okay. Uh, and my second question was uh, regarding the, was also regarding the roof sloping. When I was walking the neighborhood this weekend, I did notice a number of houses that were fairly close by that had a obviously steeper roof height than the, than, well, many of the other houses in the neighborhood, but particularly the two and a half to 12 ratio. And I guess my question, and I guess my question is what particularly distinct would distinguish those from the, like the, I, they were like, they were, I would say within this, within the same or adjacent block. So I guess I was kind of wondering what can, what distinguished those. So there is one home that uh, a single story that has a much steeper roof in the neighborhood that was approved in the late 1990s and it predated our um, single family design guidelines. So under today's conditions, we would not allow that pitch. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair. Uh, Commissioner Ingham. Thanks, Chair. <clears throat> yeah, uh, funny, I had the same question about the, the, uh, the pitch of the roof. So if I understand um, the drawings that we have, you're asking them to reduce the steepness of the pitch of the roof just on the, the first floor on the right-hand side of the that is correct. That would be over the the first floor addition, which is basically the entry area to the main 
house. Um, as you can see in the um, front elevation, um, visually it does appear steeper than the upper roof. And so staff is just recommending that it's consistent. It has a consistent roof pitch with the rest of the home. Got it, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Young. Commissioner Harrison. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so on some of the renderings, I see a, on the second floor, I see a raised roof section. But when I look at the perspectives, I don't see that raised roof section. So can you explain to me what that raised roof section is about? Is that when they were trying to cover the stairs with a roof? So uh, for that, it, it's uh, actually a dormer and that's just to provide weather protection uh, for the entry uh, to the ADU. And right, so- but, but it's not showing it on the perspective. So I'm not really sure what's being presented. So based on the front elevation or the, the 2D elevations, mm -hmm. there should be this dormer roof over the ADU entry. Um, for the renderings, you're correct, it does not show that roof form over the ADU entry. Okay, so are we approving without the overhang on the roof entry? So it's part of the uh, plans that staff is supporting um, for that um, covered entryway for the ADU. But if the planning commission feels that that element is okay not to be included with the approved drawings, we can certainly um, ask the applicant if they're okay with removing that dormer entry or dormer roof element over the ADU entry. Was there not discussion in the staff report about when you had a, it, when it was covered, then it count added square footage or added FAR and without the roof, it did not add FAR? So, so the original concept, it, it wasn't, an eave. It was a roof covered over the entire stairway and porch. And because it was solid, it would count towards the um, floor area to the ADU. Um, it would have brought the ADU over the 50%, which is not allowed by our, our ADU provisions. Um, if so, it would require variance. Um, secondly, the so we worked with the applicant in trying to kind of solve these design constraints uh, but still achieve their ultimate goal of having um, an ADU that can accommodate um, two people comfortably. And so it just resulted in the 845 square foot ADU. Um, staff did recommend um, some type of weatherproof uh, covering for that entryway. Um, just simply because, um, just for, uh, just just for benefit of of having a a covered entryway. So the fact that it's not over the stairs, it's only over the top landing, makes it not count in the FAR. Um, correct, because don't we normally don't co um, count porches in FARs? Okay, so this being a porch, not a but not over the stairs, lets it go through there. Okay. And these um, are elements that we try to support. Okay, I understand you. Um, <clears throat> can we go to the renderings that show the two different design CAD concepts or as alternate design concepts for the balcony? Because the reason I'm asking is because it appears to me <laughs> that on those two renderings, the roof pitch of the entire dwell of this second floor ADU is now four and 12, not two and a half and 12. That is correct. Okay, so if that were the case, would staff support the four and 12 pitch on the addition of the first floor? Um, so see you have alternate concept one here. It's, it appears to me to be a four and 12 which is the same as the lower addition on the first floor. So, 
So for this neighborhood, again, um, just going back to the characteristics, you know, there are shallow pitch roofs um, predominantly in the neighborhood. Um, going to a 412 pitch would be introducing, um, I guess, a steeper roof. Um, the other concern is that the existing roof towards the back of the addition would still be at, at 212. And our design guidelines um, basically encourage that, you know, the roof should be consistently designed in form and pitch. And that was the other, um, you know, concern that was brought up when they wanted to go with the steeper roof. Right. What I think I'm seeing here <clears throat> is I'm, I think that I'm seeing a 412 pitch on the second story ADU. It, I don't see it in a elevation with notations about what the pitch is, but the apparency here is that the upper roof on the ADU in this drawing is four and 12. Am I incorrect or is it actually- No, that's two? correct. Okay. And I, I understand you that you are, are not supporting a four and 12 pitch, but this alternative design concept shows a four and 12 pitch on both of those roofs. Correct. And, okay. and Could we go to the alternative concept too? Okay. I also see a four and 12 pitch here. Am I correct in that? That's correct. Okay. Could we go to the one that was originally proposed where it's the two and a half on the upper level and floor on the addition of the first floor? Now I think go back two slides, or maybe one more. There you go. Sorry, thanks. Okay. Yeah, great. So here's the two and a half, and I'm curious why on the other alternatives it didn't go to of to why it changed from a two and a half to a four. So the applicant can, um, can address that um, a little okay. bit further. Okay, thank you, that's fine. And then um, could you go back to the slide that shows the things that you're recommending, uh, the horizontal siding on the right half of the second floor elevation and the horizontal siding on the columns? And thank you for that slide, by the way, that defines a neighborhood. That was helpful. Janelle, I think go back a few more slides. Keep going. One more. Okay, one more. Okay, one more. <laughs> oh. oh. If you can advance oh, forward two slides, and you may have to uh, click it because those are um, animated. There you go. Okay, so um, we've got the, it, it's, um, it, it appears to be a smaller gauge siding, the reveal of the siding, the height of the siding seems to be a different height than the horizontal siding on the bottom half of the dwelling. Is that what was intended to be? No, I, I was just demonstrating it through, through a hatching that that would, uh, receive the, the horizontal siding treatment at that location. You're proposing the same reveal as the siding on the lower half? Yes. Okay. And then I, I see that the columns are colored, but you're proposing horizontal siding on those columns. Is that my understanding? Even though they're Correct. quite thin columns with have massive seams. So um, again, by incorporating the, the siding, it, it may cause um, the columns to be 
uh, widen, um, but we did feel by adding the siding or painting it the same color as the siding uh, would be beneficial to help uh, uh, okay, identify so, the entry. So painting it the same color as the siding was acceptable to you? It would no. be acceptable. Um, however, in our condition, we're, we are asking for it to be cladded with siding. Okay. And the siding is already notated as being a different color than the stucco? Yes. Okay. All right. And then, um, so just to uh, again reiterate on this elevation, this, the raised portion of the roof, which is to the left of the drawing, the standing seam metal roof um, is just covering the porch, not covering the stairs. And that's acceptable within the guidelines, not counting it as FAR, right? That is correct. Okay. And then my next question is, you say that other houses in the neighborhood were uh, approved with um, greater a greater percentage of second floor to first floor ratio. You've got 1293 Palamos, which is three houses down, and 1192 Manzano. When exactly were they approved? Were they approved with when these design guidelines that are extant now were in effect, or were they approved long before that? They were approved prior to the design guidelines. Okay. So do we have anything in the neighborhood approved with more than a 35% second floor to first floor ratio within these design guidelines that are currently in use? No, not based on the FAR study, which is uh, provided in the attachment. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Harrison. And with that, we can open the public hearing. We invite the app. Commissioner Harrison, did you have a question? Or you're just waiting? Okay, I get you. Uh, we, we're, the public hearing is open. We'll invite the applicant to present for up to 10 minutes. Uh, the uh, members of the public can then speak on this topic for up to three minutes at a time, at which point we'll hear back from the applicant for an additional 10 minutes. Uh, please proceed, uh, introduce yourself, tell us about the project. Great, thank you, uh, Chair. Commissioners, thank you for the time. I, I do appreciate it. Uh, my name is Nathan Iglesias, and um, I submitted this proposal originally in May of 2020. Um, that's just about 16 months ago. Um, I'm here today, finally. It, it's been a journey to get here. It's been painful. I do wanna be forthcoming about that. But at the same time, I'm glad I'm here, and I'm okay with the fact that the staff and I have not been able to come to agreement, and that we've been at loggerheads, and I'm excited to use this commission for the purpose of which it exists, which is to give guidance and to give approval. Slide, please. Okay, so my agenda for today is first, I'm gonna explain why I'm here, then I'll discuss the request, the timeline of the review, the impact of delays, and then a recap. Slide, please. So there are three primary reasons why the project was delayed. Uh, one of which um, was added most recently. The issues are first, the roof pitch. Um, the city's point of view was that the increased roof pitch did not align with the neighborhood, whereas my point of view is that the prevailing trend for all major remodels in the area, and also it's currently approved for others. Uh, second issue is the balcony setback. The city's point of view, the city planning point of view is the balcony setback requirement is 25 feet. The homeowner point of view is pulling from the code, the single family housing guidance, um, and also the ADU guidance, it was published. It's an interpretation of code and more about design. Therefore, it's subject to interpretation and there are examples in the neighborhood and there are also recently approved examples within Sunnyvale. And then lastly is the ADU size. Um, this is, I'm not gonna go into this too much since I only have 10 minutes, but this wasn't added as a point of concern until after I presented my frustration um, in June, saying that this has been um, an ongoing process and I wanted to have a chance to talk to the commission. Prior to that, I had email trend, an email uh, thread rather, and four times being told that, it, that we were just about ready to go through noticing. So it feels like it ended up being punitive to me for coming to the commission to express my frustrations. Uh, next slide, please. 
All right, so this first slide is a little bit like where's Waldo, except instead of Waldo, it's my house. Um, and the reason why where, where's Waldo works so well is because you can't find him. Um, in this situation, these are all houses pulled from my neighborhood. The upper right one is of course the one that I'm proposing. The rest of them all exist in my neighborhood. And what you'll notice is that th there's a consistency. The, the, the Lakewood is a neighborhood of change and evolution. Um, when you think of the Lakewood, uh, community, it's when it was designed, it was optimized for speed and affordability, not an enduring design. And those that have replaced their homes since then and remodeled since then have uh, adopted a more um, modern design. Slide, please. Um, the planning department and myself are fairly aligned. It's just these two truly unreconciled issues. Um, top left, you'll see what the planning department said they would support, which does have that lower uh, two and a half pitch and the reduced balcony. On the right, you have to go left, right, left, right. You'll notice a subtle difference. To me, it matters. To me, it's substantial in the sense that it's a higher quality of life. Um, the one on the right also provides an extra um, escape route during fire. Um, the one on the right, um, the roof would end up being ultimately less than two feet higher. Um, and I don't, I, don't, I don't actually agree with the sense of massing. When I look between what the city's offering and or what the planning department agrees with and what I'm proposing. I think the one on the right is the one that I'm saying fits better with the neighborhood. It has a more enduring design um, and, it's, and it's one that'll add value to the neighborhood. Slide, please. All right, again, um, wanted to show some different perspectives and to the commissioner's earlier question about the dormer over the door, that was actually, um, my renderer didn't notice that and you actually the first person to call that out. Um, I hadn't noticed before, otherwise we would have had that included in the renderings. Um, but what I wanna call out is, um, I'm not frustrated that we're here today. I'm actually frustrated that I wasn't here 10 months ago. Um, had that been the case, uh, the issues of needing a variance for size wasn't um, identified. And it really was just these two issues of roof pitch and balcony that I really was fairly um, adamant about because I only wanna build once, I don't wanna remodel it. Slide please. Um, so this is um, email excerpts from what has been, I call the 16 month saga. And I don't say that um, as uh, to be mean, but this has been, I, I think that anyone here who's a homeowner would be frustrated if the first email correspondence they got said the typical turnaround comments for a design review permit is two weeks. That was May 26th of 2020. And now on October 11th, I'm getting to present my case to the commission. Um, the comments in red are from me and the general thread, the general trend is me asking for updates and me bumping up requests and me saying in November, when can I talk to the commission? It's, it's clear to me back in November of 2020 that we weren't going to align on those two issues because at that point, there are only two issues. If you read the blue, what you'll see that the trend and the theme from the staff is that we generally agree you're very close. Um, it's just these two issues. Um, and even on um, May 4th, um, my planner said that they agreed on, on the 86 wall height um, and that the noticing would begin in... Um, be underway for the second story. Um, it wasn't, even in June, actually, they also said the second story, we can notice for the second story edition in June 1st. It wasn't until I spoke on June 14th at the commission um, that it was no longer um, about those two points of roof pitch and balcony. Now there are new issues requiring variances, requiring setbacks. Slide, please. Um, so what I'm trying to show is that the, the neighborhood is a neighborhood in change. Um, and with each remodel, you see that people are trying to maximize space to generally small lots and balance a more aesthetic, uh, modern design with function. The house on the left, built in the 50s, low slant roof, single roof. The house on the right, again, not far from me, within my neighborhood, major remodel in 2019 with a conventional slant, slant roof and two-story balcony. The questions I would hear from, or the points I got back from my planner were, A, two stories aren't common in the neighborhood, Balconies of the front of the home aren't common and we can't support a conventionally sloped roof. I'm gonna address all three of those. Slide, please. Um, first, I wanna call out the regulation to the left is from the city of Sunnyvale, the bottom right of it. It shows 850 square feet or a thousand square feet for a two bedroom or not to be more than 50% of the existing home. This is the guidance for building an ADU. 
With a lot I have in order for me to participate in an ADU, which I want to do, um, I effectively have to go to a second story. I can't put it in the backyard. It won't fit. It wouldn't be financially prudent for me to tear down part of the first story and then to build out. Building a second story is a way that I can actually participate in a statewide program. Um, and another thing I want to point out is based off of the requirements from the single family home design techniques, we shouldn't even be here um, to discuss those two issues. Um, it says new two-story homes and second-story modifications or additions that do not exceed the floor area or thresholds uh, require neighborhood notification in a 14-day comment period. So this really should have been limited at the staff level review. Um, the reason why I wanted to come to the commission was to introduce and give my case for the increase in roof pitch and the balcony. Slide, please. Um, my neighborhood. Okay, so the top left graphic is the city of Sunnyvale's uh, borders. Below that, you can see I have a cutout of one mile. My house is the little uh, black star. And if you go over to the far right graphic, what you'll see is all the red stars are two-story houses. And then the larger red star is my current house. Um, I do have a, you know, two-story houses right near my house um, with what would fall within the uh, neighborhood requirements that um, the city planner shared. Um, what you're going to see is that the majority of houses that have been remodeled in my neighborhood have resulted in adopting a normal slant roof. Um, and that about 61% of the major remodels in, um, included adding a second story as well. And this is, again, speaks to the fact that the lots are fairly small. Slide, please. Um, so if I'm in the case for a conventional pitch roof, um, the reason why conventional pitch roofs matter is several things. One, roofing material options. Um, second, skylight options. Um, and then third, the aesthetic appeal. The house here is the one that was referred to earlier. It's three houses to the left of my house. Um, I'm not looking for something that extreme. I'm looking for something that the naked eye probably wouldn't even be able to discern. Slide, please. Of the major remodels in my house, and excuse me, in my neighborhood, 90% have increased, uh, included increasing roof pitches. Uh, these two houses, which would fall in by the, the standards that uh, were shared, uh, they would fall in my neighborhood block. Um, so this is on Manzino Way. Both of them are on Manzino Way, both uh, very near my home. And they both have, these are excerpts from their permits showing that they raised the roof. And these permits were filed in 2010 per the, per, um, the permit pulled. Slide, please. Conventionally sloped roofs are not a trend in my area. They're, excuse me, they are a trend. They're not an anomaly. Um, these are a sampling of houses that I've pulled out in my neighborhood. Again, if, if you refer to that original uh, portion of my neighborhood that I pulled out, the, the one mile by half mile, these are the types of houses that you'd find in there. You'd find that when people remodel, they're not emulating the very affordable, very quick to build, very flat roof design. They're going with something that's more modern. Slide, please. Hi, Nathan. I'm Chair Howard. Sure. I just wanted to let you know that the applicant's time has expired. Yeah. Mr. Iglesias, you'll have an additional 10 minutes after we get uh, feedback from members of the public. All right. Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Iglesias. With that, uh, Commissioner Riom, do you have a question for the applicant? I do. I do. Um, so, so I think what staff explained, too, is that the pitch of the existing house is 212, right? So are you, do you have any, any, um, any desire to match that pitch? You're on mute, I can't oh, hear you. We did, we, we did recommend that. I'm Jose Rama, by the way, I'm the designer of the project. We did recommend that and uh, Cindy came back saying that uh, that could have been an option, but we left it there. But it, yes, we were willing to change that pitch to a four. Okay, so in my other comment too is when you're showing other houses in the neighborhood with a 412 pitch, you know, they're, they're single family, most of them. Uh, and, and my concern too is to have part of the house at 412 and the other part at 212. Uh, but those are just some comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Young. Commissioner Harrison. Um. Actually, my comment, my question is more for staff, so I'll hold it. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Harrison. 
Uh, with that, we'll open this to members of the public who may wish to speak on this project at 1279 Palamos Avenue. Uh, if you wanted to speak, you're going to speak up for up to three minutes. If you're on the Zoom, you can raise the, use the raise hand feature. If you're on the phone, you can hit star nine. Staff, do we have any members of the public wishing to speak at this time? Not at this time, Chair Howard. That's what I'm saying. Or that's what I'm seeing. Thank you. Uh, with that, we conclude the feedback from members of the public and the applicant is invited to speak for an additional 10 minutes if they so choose. Mr. Okay. Glaces? Is it possible to continue presenting? It should be. And staff will hook you up in a moment, I'm sure. Okay, thank you. Yeah, he One has, moment, please. He has 10 minutes to do as he pleases. Yep. Within reason. Okay, within reason. Got my <laughs> camera. Um, so uh, what I'm showing here again is conventionally sloped roofs are a trend and not an anomaly in the neighborhood. Slide, please. Um, this is this is a picture I took from within the neighborhood uh, three weeks ago. It's 0.2 miles from my home, um, and it is a um, the permit says that they are reframing it to four by twelve, and it's a two story. Um, and this is I pulled out the portion of the email that says this is what you've given us are examples of things that are we can't or something we would not allow today, and yet that literally today 0.2 miles from my house, um, which is like not far at all, can see it. Uh, they're in the process of reframing their entire house at four by 12. Slide, please. Um, and then regarding the question of would I be willing to do both, um, make the whole house four by 12. Um, this email thread here, I, I offered, I, I literally say, um, if I were to re-roof the entire house by four by 12, would that meet the requirement? And the staff said, no, we couldn't because it, it wouldn't meet the requirements for the neighborhood. Um, so I did offer that. Um, what I would rather say, though, is um, as opposed to re-roofing the entire house, what you can see from these images is you, you can't actually see the back part. So yes, um, I would be willing to re-roof the entire house. The fact is the roof is still like within 10 years new. Um, and I don't think that it would be visually impactful. And I think it would just be fiscally wasteful to have to re-roof the back when you can't actually see it. Slide, please. Um, and if I in the case for the over garage balcony, um, to the left is what I'm trying to avoid. This is a house in San Jose. Um, the balcony looks a bit kitschy. It looks added on. It looks like an afterthought. Uh, the house on the right is three doors down to me. And um, it's something that, that doesn't, it, it looks much more solid. It looks quite deliberate. Slide, please. Um, what you'll see here, these are houses pulled from my neighborhood. The bottom three all have balconies right over the garage. Um, and you'll also see that the, the setbacks haven't been uni uniformly enforced. I understand things that have been done in the past we can't do again today, but what I am asking for is equal, you know, equal access. Um, I'm trying to take advantage of the space. I wanna live in that ADU. I wanna be able to open the doors and have a full balcony. Slide, please. Um, and then this is a picture of me with some houses. Um, and these are houses in Sunnyvale um, that were built uh, just recently, and they have uh, their balconies right over the garage. And when I'm holding in my hand, you can't see it. It's not a key fob. It is a laser measure tape. And um, those garages are at 20 feet from the property line with the balconies right over it in Sunnyvale. So th these houses were able to get what I'm trying to get. Slide, please. And then this plan right now that's on the market um, has approved plans. And as you can see, balconies right over the garage and given the space considerations and limitations, I can guarantee you that those garages are gonna be either at or very, very near that 20 foot requirement for the first uh, setback. Set so what I'm saying is this really isn't a matter of code um, because if it were, these other modern examples wouldn't exist. Next slide, please. Next slide. So the impact of delay, um, unrecoverable costs. So it's been 18, excuse me, it's been 16 months since I submitted my plans. Um, I've had to pay excess rent to find a place to live. Um, I've, I have appliances. I literally have a, a refrigerator in my front yard in Sunnyvale that won't fit in the garage because it's too short. The garage is too short. And so it's been there because I was told that due to supply lines, I needed to order my appliances and to expect it to take at least 90 days. And I thought by then that I would have something. Um, I've had to pay rendering fees that again, I wouldn't have had to pay. Um, and then I've spent just the countless hours and over a hundred emails. Slide please. 
So in closing, the recap is, if you look at la what's being supported on the left versus what I want on the right, I, I'm not trying to be overly particular other than that I know what I want. I think it, it looks much nicer. It has better curb appeal. Um, the one on the left, uh, if, if I can't have what I want, you know, obviously I, I do want, I need somewhere to live. Um, the one on the right adds a foot and a half of height to the, to the roof, but I think it, it's a much better look. It gives me skylights that, that I can have open. Um, and, and I realize that for the unrecoverable costs, that's foregone. But what I'm asking is for the commission to please support something that, that you have the power to do. And I, it's been such a long time and I'm really needing forward momentum. If, it, if this didn't matter to me, I would have capitulated in October of last year, but, but these points um, that exist in the neighborhood all around me, I can't help but not see it. Um, and I think, it, it, and I know what I want and I've invested the time and energy. So I'm, I'm seeking your help. That's all I got. Mr. Glacius, thank you for your presentation. Um, and Mr. Rama as well. Do we have any last questions for the applicant at this time? Commissioner Harrison, you got one for the applicant or you're, this is gonna be for staff? <clears throat> no, for the applicant. Okay, please. Um, thank you, Mr. Iglesias, for your presentation. Um, would you be ex uh, accepting of, are you accepting of the other conditions of approval that the staff has suggested, the horizontal siding on the right half of the second floor and the either the horizontal siding on the columns or the same color as the siding on the columns? Uh, yes, Commissioner. For me, th those points are, are fairly moot. So I I'm pretty flexible on that. It's more about the space. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Harrison. Commissioner Ryu? Yeah. And then what about uh, staff's recommendation on eight foot uh, height of the second floor? Comments from the applicant? So that was, um, uh, that's fairly new to me. The, in the last email exchange that we had in May that I shared, um, it said that they were supportive of the eight and a half. Um, so I actually didn't realize uh, that the change had been made. We, I'm sorry, we did we did uh, introduce the, we had a higher plate, we reduced it to an A6. It's much more cleaner look, especially, especially when you have a secondary floor for clearance. We over, uh, over the entrance of that ADU, we had to extend another foot to accommodate a more elaborated entrance because of the fact that it was so flat and anybody through there would hit that, you know, with a header. Um, I mean, these design guidelines are made 1960s. I mean, it, we have to get out of the little hole that we are in right now. Um, the clearance is too low. So we need at least minimum A6. And that was basically accepted months back. Um, that was basically, this is A foot now, it's all brand new to us. Okay, thanks for your comments. Thank you, Commissioner Young. Uh Cindy Holm, uh, the staff has her hand up. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to provide some additional clarification on why staff had recommended um, an eight foot plate height. Um, so in the staff report, we discussed that there's a design guideline uh, for the second to first floor ratio. For this particular proposal, the ADU would um, exceed that 35% threshold. Um, so just if the planning commission felt that the second story massing was too much, that they could entertain the condition to reduce the, it to eight foot to help with the massing. All right. Anything further? Actually, uh, Chair, could I ask, is the, uh, can we still ask a question to the applicant? I reckon you could, we haven't closed the public hearing yet. Okay. So question to the applicant, and this is just my opinion, but I'd like to know your, what you prefer if, if there's even an option. But um, between the 412 pitch roof and eight and a half, the, the floor height at eight versus eight and a half, what is more important to you? I know you want both, but I'm just asking if you could have one or the other, and I'm not saying that we're gonna recommend either of them, but I'm just 
trying to get what you're what you're most interested in. I, I appreciate the question, Commissioner, and I understand that you are not offering that. You're just getting my opinion. Um, and while I while I do want both, um, I I think that I would probably defer to my um my designer for what he would think would look best if it was the, either the eight eight six or the four by twelve. Yeah, the, the, the massing of the of the A6 difference on play height uh, versus the four, we're talking about a foot and four inches. Um, it's not going to make a big difference in massing studies. Uh, the, 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 the design uh, that we are approaching, and it looks perfectly fine the way it is right now. The massing doesn't look humongous. If you go to all the other additional homes that he has shown, those are massive designs. This is just very subtle, very clean. Uh, there's not, I mean, we are not uh, putting a foot height plates on the windows. We're keeping that to be a seven. Um, we basically, we, in, we are mimicking the environment uh, versus other homes in the area that are not. And I'm, I mean, A6, a difference with a four pitch roof it's not a big difference. It's, there's not really that much, much of, a, of a mass to be discussed. But would you care to answer my question or no? I, I, we would like personally both. I know that, but I'm asking you if, you if if one or the other, I'm just trying to get your opinion. I'm trying to help you here, but if you don't want to answer the no, question, no, that's, that's fine too. I know. I, I, we prefer the A6. We prefer okay. the A6. A6. Thank you. Yeah. That's all I was asking. Thank you. Thank you, there, Commissioner Room. Commissioner Harrison. Got to hit mute. Yep. I, it's sort of a joint. It's a joint question for the applicant and staff. Are you willing to let me ask this, Chair? Uh, please. Okay. So. Um, Cindy, do you have any data on, well, can you tell me when the, new, the current design guidelines were enacted? They were adopted in 2003. 2003. So, um, and then there are a lot of pictures that the applicant presented of projects with four and 12 roof, roof pitches in the broader neighborhood, in the Lakewood neighborhood, as opposed to the two uh, block official definition of neighborhood. Where the, do either of you know, either the applicant or Cindy, do you know when those projects were approved with the four and 12 pitches? Because 2003 is a long time ago, the current, the current guideline, that's a long time ago. They look like they're likely within that time frame, but does anybody know were they approved within that time frame since 2003? I can answer that. Um, Madam Chair, in my presentation, the two houses I showed, those again would fall under the, um, the definition of, an, of a block based off of what the, the planner shared. Uh, those were in 2010. And then the one that's 0.2 miles, which again, 0.2 miles is, um, would I, if I had a really good maybe arm, I could, see it with a, my binoculars, just kidding. Um, but um, that was approved right now. It's it's being built right now, the four by 12. Okay, but you presented about 12 or 15 projects. And I'm curious if, the I, I, I get it about those three, totally good. Um, those 10 or 12 projects with the four and 12 pitch, are the majority of those since 2003 or are the majority of those before 2003? If, so, you, if anybody can tell me. Be, being honest, and uh, the ones that I shared are all meant to be newer, um, and they were in that square, and those were between 2000, the majority of them were after 2010. And, the, okay. and you can tell um, they're just, they're much newer looking. Right, right. Uh, Commissioner yeah. Harrison, if I could just add to it, that um, I don't know if we've had the chance to do the same research on the, on the things that he showed. I don't know if Cindy's had that opportunity, but you know, the big thing here is context, right? That's what, that's the whole purpose of that policy is that the reason why it says within that distance is because it's trying to keep in context, 
what else is out there. We, we completely agree. And I, I totally agree that, you know, the world's changing. Uh, Sunnyvale's changing. Property values are creating uh, the need or for people to, to build bigger homes where you have an extremely small, low slung neighborhood. Uh, and so what we're doing is saying, if you look at the context of that neighborhood, uh, a taller two-story building is not in that context. Therefore, we're saying, let's keep the floor plates lower. Let's, let's do everything we can in our techniques to make it so it doesn't stand out so much. You'll always find the one-off, the two-off, the three-off. That doesn't mean that those are right. That may be that somebody was convinced that that was the right decision at that time. Um, but uh, I, I understand the position. And that's one of the reasons why we are, we struggled with this as much as we did and why we're really looking forward to seeing the action you take because it'll help inform us as we go forward. Okay, thank you. What I understand here is that either the two and a half in 12 or the anything that reduces the massing or the lowered plate height, all of those are potential tools to minimize the, the massing difference between this project and other projects in the neighborhood. Is that right, Andy, Cindy? That's correct. And so again, you know, when we conduct these design reviews, we do rely on, on the, design techniques, and we try to encourage um, consistency with those design guidelines. Um, however, at least for this particular case, we, we did want to accommodate some of the objectives of the applicant, and plus they're proposing a, a second story ADU, and we do want to facilitate housing. Um, therefore, that that is why we're, we're coming with this recommendation with, with this um, modified design from the original concept. Okay, and then I'm trying to, um, I, I think in the report and has been discussed is that the second st story to first story ratio being higher than the 35 is okay with you because I, I get about the FAR, you know, that often when you have a small lot, the FAR gets bigger because you've got a small lot. But the second to first floor ratio, could you tell me again the rationale behind, besides the fact that it's an ADU and it adds dwelling units to the city's housing stock, why that's a justified thing in your mind? Um, so we feel that the way that it's designed, it's generally consistent with our um, requirements and design guidelines. But additionally, um, uh, with the conditions, implementation of those conditions, we feel that the second story massing um, is reduced further with those treatments. And so that is why we're, we're supporting uh, a higher uh, second to first floor ratio. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Harrison. Uh, Commissioner Howe. Thank you. Just a couple of questions of staff. I forget, how far is the noticing requirement from the project, the number of feet? 300 feet. And how close to this meeting was this project noticed, time-wise? So it's, uh, it requires a 10-day noticing. Okay, and so that was timely done in staff's Correct. opinion. There you go. Did staff receive any comments, either written or oral, on the project once it was um, noticed? No. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Al. Commissioner Yu. Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, so a question for staff about the, the roofing. And so the 212 and the existing first story in the back versus the proposed 412 in the front. So is it, um, so, so basically staff is saying that we don't recommend mixing, right? If we're gonna do 412, we do 412 on both. 
or 212 on both, right? It's one or the other, right? It's not a mixture, correct? Okay, and, and part of the reason why, I'm assuming, is that if you have 212 on the first floor and 412 on the second floor, that's just going to add to it looking um, you disjointed. Know, disjointed, and, and also it's going to make it just look bigger. Um, okay. Um, uh, Chair, would it be okay? Could I ask the applicant one more question? I'm not even sure if we've closed. Have... We're, we're still in the public meeting. Okay, so good, good, go good. for it. So I'm going to go to the applicant one more time. Um, so unfortunately, uh, you know, our job not here is about the co your cost and what how much it would cost for you to do things. That's not what we're not here to decide what's more cost effective. So I, I'm going to pose that question to you again about, um, you know, because I, I agree it would be a lot of money to 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 uh, to make your back the existing part of the house of 412. So it, it, is that still is that still more desirable for you to spend that money to do a 412 in the back to match the 412 on the second story in the front? That's just a question. Yes, sure. I understand the question. Um, and if you gave me the option of eight, um, the plate height of 86 or the 412, for that reason, I'd choose 86 because that makes a lot more sense. If you said we were supportive of both, then I would want to re-roof the entire house simply for the purpose that I, I wouldn't want to try um, in four years, five years down the road, be at this junction again and, and not happy. So to answer your question, I would, I would re-roof the entire house. Thank you. All right, thank you, Commissioner. Is there any ob objections to closing the public hearing? We therefore close the public hearing, bring it back to the dais. Uh, do we want to do any discussion or does somebody want to try to go for a motion? Commissioner Howe? Yeah, the motion would be to uh, do the 412 on both roofs and give 8.6 8 and all of the other boilerplate in there and allow the wider um, balcony. Thank you, Commissioner Howe. I think that's a clear motion. Commissioner Harrison? I, se I second. All right, thank you, Commissioner Harrison. Um, so the motion is to approve with the recommended findings and the conditions and with the modifications that there's a wider balcony per the applicant's recommend, uh, request. Uh, is the roof pitch 412 uh, has to be rebuilt on the back or just 412 on new roofing? 412 on both, all the roofs. 412 that, all around. All and, around, uh, but back and front. Ken, isn't that what you, isn't yeah. that the question that you asked the- Yes, um, John. Yes, John. Yeah. yeah, and he said that he would prefer to do the whole show and not just half. So the 412 on both sides, uh, the 8-6 plate height and the wider balcony. Right on. Uh, and just to clarify, I think the applicant said he'd prefer not to do the, the 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 back roof if he didn't have to, but if it got him 412 all around, he would be willing to eat that expense. Commissioner Rio? Or actually, let me speak to the... Commissioner Howe, do you wish to speak to your motion? With the chair's permission, Commissioner Rio, do you have a comment on uh, the 412 or any of that business that you brought up? No, just uh, comments on uh, staff's other recommendations about the the siding um, on the second story and also the uh, the entrance way in, in front of the you know the, the two columns in the front. Are, are you guys suggesting we take staff's recommendation on the, on those as well? The motion motion would have been that okay. it would be four twelve on both roofs, the wider balcony. And all of the other and the eight six and all of the other things that are in the staff report. Got it. Thank you, Mr. Harrison. That works for you. I'd like to make a friendly amendment. Um, go for or, it. Well, well, I'd like to offer that instead of siding on the columns, that the applicant has the option to paint the columns the same color as the siding, and I can elaborate on my reasons when I speak. That's acceptable to the maker of the motion. If it's acceptable to the second, yeah, Commissioner, second is the second. <laughs> very good. Uh, Commissioner, Rio, anything else? All right, Commissioner, how please speak to your motion? Yeah, I think that the um, applicant has worked with the city staff, and what he's asking for is reasonable stuff. I understand the city staff want to decrease 
the massing and the planning commission frequently has talked about getting the massing down, dropping it from nine foot to eight foot on the plate. We've done all those things. And I think the staff's got to be just spinning, trying to figure out what the planning commission really wants. But this is one project that we're dealing with tonight. And this project, I think the applicant has asked for reasonable things. The balcony, the fact that he is doing an ADU, which is adding uh, housing, um, housing to the area, uh, certainly is allowed by state law, in my opinion. So I think that it does blend in with the with the uh, neighborhood because of the of the pictures that the applicant showed. And 2003, um, one of us worked on that, on those housing things. And believe it or not, it was as a result of a monster house next door on uh, Wright Avenue. So this one, I believe, does fit into the neighborhood. And the fact that everybody was notified within this 300 foot and the 10 days being timely and not one person in the neighborhood said it's good or bad. I think that shows that it's certainly at least acceptable to that neighborhood. So I can do all the findings, et cetera. And I ask the planning commission to approve this one. Thank you, chair. Mr. Howe, thank you. Commissioner Harrison, do you second? Thank you. Um, I totally support staff's um, effort to reduce the massing, to not create drastic divergences between different houses in the neighborhood. And to me, the design treatment that reduces the massing the most is the broader porch with the see-through horizontal railing that of all the renderings and perspectives and elevations that we saw, that to me is the, the design technique which actually accomplishes that goal. So I'm, I'm also supportive of a dwelling unit that needs less maintenance in the future. So the, the four and 12 pitch I know allows uh, materials choices, skylights, shingles instead of metal roofing, et cetera, et cetera. It, it allows more materials choices that are more maintainable. Um, and so the four, that's what makes convinces me of the 412 pitch and the eight foot six plate height, the architect's statement that without the eight foot six plate height, the secondary roof over the porch cannot readily be accomplished is what convinces me of that plate height because I'm usually the, a person who says, let's reduce the plate height to reduce the mass. Um, and um, I believe that the siding on a column that thin would just be a maintenance nightmare with all those seams. And therefore I'm proposing that if the paint was the color of the siding, that that would be a more maintainable uh, treatment than the siding. And I can make the findings uh, that this project is within the design the city's design criteria, the state's criteria with regard to the ADUs. I can support the ex the uh, expanded uh, over 35% um, second floor to first floor ratio based on the very see-through railing on the front that reduces the massing. And thus I can make the findings. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Harrison. I'm going to call Commissioner Young, but first I see staff uh, want to jump in. Cindy, uh, what have you got to say? Yes, I just wanted to, to just get clarification from the Planning Commission that um, for you're going with con alternative concept one with the open railing, just, just for confirmation. Okay. Yes, that was the intent of the motion. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Rium. Thanks, Chair. Um, I can I can uh, I can make the findings and I will be supporting the motion. Um, I, I want to give the applicant some kudos. You're very passionate about your project and uh, uh, you know good for you and good for you for uh, for convincing us of, of on your design. I also want to give you kudos for a quality design here. Um, I've been a little concerned about what we're going to see with people adding ADUs and if they're going to come with a quality product and and I do see that here, so I appreciate that. Um, I also wanna thank staff for their recommendations on their changes to this design because 
personally, I think the recommendations created a better design, uh, but that's just my opinion. Um, and, I, and I respect that what the applicant wants, it's his house and, and so forth. But, but uh, normally, uh, not normally, but sometimes I don't like staff's recommendations. And then this time I think, I think they, would have, they would have made a, a, a good uh, design change. So uh, with that, um, I will be supporting the motion and I hope my fellow commissioners can as well, will as well. Thank you, Commissioner Rio. Uh, Vice Chair. Thank you. Uh, first, just a brief question to staff. Can you confirm that alternative one does not require any addition? Sorry, that the al applicant alternative one slash the motion we're voting on does not require finding any additional variances than the one previously requested in the staff report. Good question. And I appreciate you asking that question. Rebecca, are you available? Um, I'm sorry, I was, um, can, can you repeat the question? I'm, I'm going to dealing ask, with a I'm technical restate, Zoom issue. Let me restate the question for you, Martin. So the project, if, if the project had more floor area than was noticed for, would that be an issue? Like one to two square feet? You know, I, I think that's so small. I, I, I think it would be de minimis. Okay, so then the answer is nothing more is needed. Okay, thank you. I can. I'm not going to rehash what previous commissioners have said unduly. I, I'm in. I'm in agreement. I, I, can, I can make the findings for that for the variance that due to the AD that due to the ADU usage, which is which is constant with city policy and constant and state policy to build more housing. That we can make the findings that that the strict that a strict application of the ordinance would not would not be would not that would not be in the would not would not the con con the constant thing to do that this that the ver that we are approving something that serves the intent and purpose of the ordinance and that the, this does not grant a special privilege and will not be material detrimental to the public welfare or injuries to the property etc i again i echo previous commissioners comments and with that i will be supporting the motion thank you vice chair commissioner did you have anything to add right on uh, the chair will be supporting the motion. Uh, I want to. I appreciate that there seems to be a consensus on the planning commission, and that Commissioner Hall, thank you for making the motion that apparently everybody is agreeing with. Uh, I, I'll just add that I can make the findings, and I agree with everything that's been said um, on the wider balcony. Uh, and I haven't made it up to the neighborhood to take a look around, but if you pop in a street view on Google and just looking around. I'm not an expert, but I see at least three uh, houses just, you know, within quick eyesight that are the, the 412 roof. And uh, I don't see that as being in conflict with the, um, with the neighborhood. I'd also add, uh, I appreciate the applicant's uh, passion here and would note that the, the planning commission does, uh, is, has a vacancy and we are taking applications. And if you know anybody who might be interested, they should definitely submit their application. Uh, with that, uh, can we please call the vote? Vice Chair Pine? Yes. Commissioner Harrison? Yes. Commissioner Yoom? Yes. Chair Howard? Yes. Commissioner Howe? Yes. The motion passes with five yeses and Commissioner Y is absent. Thank you for that. Uh, Ms. Sharma, the staff that fated this motion? Well, the decision of the planning commission is final unless appealed or called up within 15 days to the city council. All right. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Mr. Iglesias. We can move on to that closes the public hearing general business. We can move to standing item consideration of potential study issues. Uh, if you wish to comment on if a member of the public wish to comment on consideration of potential study issues, you can use the raise hand feature in Zoom. If you're on the phone, you can hit star nine. Staff, do we have anybody wishing to make comment on consideration of potential study issues? I guess not. I uh, for Gia, I don't think so. Okay. No, I don't see any, thank you. All right, and then we've got uh, agenda item number four. The Planning Commission proposed study issues calendar year 2022, which seems to go with the other item. But um, is there anything is there anything to present on agenda item number four? No. All right. With that, 
We can move to non-agenda items and comments. Do we have commissioner comments? Seeing no commissioner comments, we must have some staff comments. Yeah, so last week the city council held a, a, a hearing with the Valley Water uh, to talk about water and the availability of water and the drought, extreme drought that we're in. Um, there, there is a good presentation, a good, a good handout of information that um, is available on the, on the webpage, on Legistar on the city webpage. But it's definitely a big concern and it is something that um, they're taking. Uh, I didn't realize that the majority of drinking water in Sunnyvale comes from groundwater and there's about a 40% reduction of groundwater. We get a lot of water from the state, but I guess I didn't realize that that much water comes from the groundwater. So um, if you're interested in that, you may wanna take a look at that. We're definitely gonna take more of that into consideration. We're gonna be coming back to you um, with uh, the potential change to, the, to our landscape ordinance to, in order to tighten some of that up. Um, it is interesting that you've, you've, I think, all been present except for um, Commissioner Pine, but uh, that when we do our, our semi-annual uh, meeting with the water group and for the city, they'll let you know that for the most part, water consumption has, even though population has risen, uh, water consumption has dropped pretty dramatically over the years, but eventually uh, you still have to be really careful and really cautious of what you're doing. So how people landscape, uh, uh, the, the reach codes with the low flow fixtures, uh, and we're looking at some possibilities in the future, maybe in Moffat Park, we can look at zero uh, um, net zero water usage. Um, so, you know, we can just keep trying to innovate and, and do what we can to help with that situation. But anyway, that's something the council considered. I didn't attend it, but I heard it was really interesting. So I went back and looked at some of that and that's pretty much all I have. All right, with that, uh, we can adjourn the meeting at 8.23 PM. Thank you everybody who, who's attended. Hey guys. Bye everybody. Stay Great healthy, night. happy, adios. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.